Hello everybody, this is Eric from FinalCutStudioSchool.com and I had a a uh, request for a shake tutorial about just how to do a simple sky replacement. Now I'm not going to get too detailed about this, I'm not going to do any fine tuning or nothing, I'm just going to show you the basic how to so you all can go and experiment with the fine tuning yourself. It's fairly straightforward, takes a little bit to get your head wrapped around, but the process is much better and more professional and more controllable uh, with shake because it's nodal based than with a layer based system so um, let's just get started so the first thing I want to do is I want to patch up my picture I want to look at it because I want to apply some nodes and I want to make sure nothing in my picture is going to interfere with my nodes and I see this little white right here and I want to get rid of that because that's going to cause problems so I'm going to go into my image nodes and I'm going to select a quick paint and that will bring my quick paint node down right there. So now I'm going to go in and select sure it's on persist or it won't work. Persist means this paint mark that I'm going to make will stay here this the whole time, the whole range of the of the scene. Instead of putting it to frame, it will just be on one frame and interpolate. It will animate in between sh uh, strokes and persist. It just means the stroke will stay right where it's at. So I'm going to click the clone button, the little sheep icon. That's what they are, the little sheeps. I'm going to use the shift and drag it around in the command key and shift and to make the size smaller and I'm gonna go in here like this and I'm gonna paint out this white stuff with my clone brush just bear with me here and if I see anything anything else I might like this little piece of white right here I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of white in here let me spin this around like this there now that we have most of this white to get, that's all I really wanted to do is just touch up this white stuff here. Let me zoom back out. Now that takes care of that. Now we have that little blemish took care of. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to key this out. Because our sky is so blue, we're going to be able to use a key lock. So um, let me go to my key tab, select key lock. Added it to my mat. Let me add it to my quick paint node. There, now our key light is added down from our quick paint node, and as you can see, the sky changes color, indicating that our node is active. So I'm going to go down here and click on my screen color, and I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to just swap. So click and swap, like that. And there's a little bit of noise right around in here, if you can see it. Let me switch to my alpha. I want to drag a little bit more, just drag around until you get something that looks pretty good. Then you want to adjust your screen range to fill it out. Like that right there. Now it looks like we're getting a pretty good mat. As you can see, that kind of took out our blue sky. Not much of a problem, huh? Pretty good key or inside shake, if I must say so myself. So I'm going to add a blur to this key light. I'm going to go to my filters, blur. Now when I blur this, I just want to blur the edges. So I'm going to change my channels to A A A B. This means it's going to just blur my alpha and alpha and blue channels. I hit enter. And I'm going to take my blur up a little bit. Not much. Let me take it way up so I can show you what happens if you overdo it. You can see the blue starting to shine through on the rocks there. So we don't want that. We want to take it down. I'm just wanting to blur the edges just a little bit just to take away that hard hard edge. Okay, now it's looking like we're getting a pretty good key. We'll stop right there with that one. Now, I need to go in and make a roto shape, a holdout mat, if you will. So, I'm going to go into my image tab. I'm going to click on roto shape. I'm going to work in context by loading my clean plate into the viewer and clicking the right side of my roto shape to get the tools. And then I'm going to go in here and just lay some generic points down because I already have a roto shape made and I'm going to use that one. I just wanted to show you how to do this. So, I'll just go in here and click along the rocks here, making sure not to get into the sky any. Bring it around and chop it off. And there. That's our generic shape. You see what I've done here. So now let me remove this one and bring the one I've done beforehand. It's a little bit better. It is right here. As you can see, there, as you can see I've used a lot more points and been a lot care more careful about what's going on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this roto shape and on the key light node we're going to bring it down, not to the second one, which is the key light background. 
we're going to bring it into the third one, which is a holdout mat. This is the place for the holdout mat. So bring your mat down into the third, like that right there. And then when we click on our Vlur node, boom. Our sky is keyed out. A pretty good dang key. Look at this right here. I mean, yes, you can see a little bit, but nothing that ain't easily fixed. This is wonderful. Okay, we got a pretty good key going on here. So now, we're wanting to replace the sky. That's the whole point of this. So first, let me go over here to my blur. Let me add a few more things. I'm going to add a color brightness node and a color saturation node. The saturation, I will adjust these in a minute. I guess I could bring it down a little bit. Like that right there, just to... Because this saturation slider is going to affect our reflection of our clouds because we're going to put some clouds in here and it's going to reflect down onto our rocks. So, um, let me set my saturation, let me adjust my brightness a little bit, brighten it down. So, 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 be so, so bright. Okay, now we've got that. So, now let's start working on our clouds. And these are the four elements I have already. I had my clean plate, my pitcher, which is this. And I have my roto shape. Then I have just a plain color I'm going to use to blend into the sky. Then I have my clouds, which were made in Cinema 4D. So, let's begin this. And here we are back for our normal sky replay. Our sky is gone, so let's start working on our clouds. Let's bring our clouds in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a flip node. I'm going to transfer transform tab and add a flip not flop a flip as you can see this flips it down now this is also going to be used for our clouds up top in the sky here let me show you we're going to use this one set of clouds to, to replace the sky and we're also going to use this set of clouds to cast a shadow of the clouds on these rocks when they go by you we're going to have to have a little bit of a shadow from these clouds rolling over so we're going to use the same piece of clouds for both items. I could, if I wanted to, make a copy of these clouds and use two separate copies of the clouds, one for the reflection and one for the sky, but I'm not. I'm just going to use the same one and I'll show you how to do that. So now I have a flip and we're working on our reflection right now. I'll bring it over here. Then what I'm going to do is select my clouds again and I'm going to sh shift click on Move 2D. When I do that, this will branch out a Move 2D node. Now as you can see, I have my Move 2D node, which is my clouds up top. Now I have my flip node, which is the clouds on the bottom. I'm having two sets of clouds coming off this one piece of video. This is what's wonderful about Shake. You don't have to make two copies of the clouds, have the Move 2D coming from one copy and the flip coming from the other copy. Use one copy for your reflection, one copy for your sky. No, you don't have to do that in Shake. You use the one piece of source media for all your, for all your uses. As you can see, I have two coming out here. One for the top and one for the bottom and they're both coming from the same piece of media if that makes any sense so now what I'm going to do is want to add a reorder node I got to reorder I want to reorder my colors so I'm going to go to my color tab and find my reorder node and add a reorder node now my colors down here are R G B and A I want to change it to R G B R we don't want it to affect the alpha we don't want to reorder the alpha like that right there then I'm going to add a contrast luma from the color. So come into the color tab, add a contrast luma. And you can adjust with full of these values a little bit if you want to. Make them darker, a little bit lighter. That looks pretty good to me right there. Now I want this blur and this brightness node that I applied to only affect the contrast luma, these clouds. I want, I want this blur and this brightness to affect the clouds also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this contrast luma down and hook it in to the side of my brightness. And I'm going to bring another noodle down and hook it into the side of my saturation. Now, when I adjust brightness and saturation, it's going to um, adjust my clouds along with it.